Hello and welcome to Wake Up with Dr. Cheryl. Wealth is the ability to fully experience life by Henry David Thoreau. I like to share something funny. A blonde is speaking to her psychiatrist. On the road, I'm on the road a lot and my clients are complaining that I can never, that can never reach me. The doctor, don't you have a phone in your car? The blonde says, that was a little too expensive, so I did the next best thing. I put a mailbox in my car. Doctor says, uh, how's that working? The blonde says, actually, I haven't gotten any letters yet. And why do you think that is? The doctor says. The blonde says, I'll figure it's because when I'm driving around, my zip code keeps changing. Okay. I would like to remind us with four, the four agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz, be impeccable with your word. Speak with integrity, say only what you mean. Avoid using the word to speak against yourself or to gossip about others. Use the power of your word in the direction of truth and love. Don't take anything personally. Nothing others do is because of you. What others say and do is a production of their own dream. When you are immune to the opinions and actions of others, you won't be a victim to needless suffering. Don't make assumptions. Find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstandings, sadness, and drama. With just this one agreement, you can completely transform your life. Always do your best. Your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different when you are healthy as opposed to sick. Under any circumstance, simply do your best and you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. Our special guest this evening is Michael Pritchard and returning for the second time. This is the first segment of a two-part discussion with Michael. Michael. Michael Pritchard is a nationally acclaimed keynote speaker praised by the Wall Street Journal, CNN, and Time for his ability to use humor in, to inspire and educate his audiences on communication skills. Michael Pritchard is a big guy with a warm heart who, as one of his students described him, truly walks as he talks. <laughs> he began his career on both the comedy stage and as a juvenile counselor in San Francisco's Youth Guidance Center. Michael's offers from Hollywood rolled in, including a guest appearance on an Emmy award-winning episode of Taxi. His sensational stand-up comedy billed him with Robin Williams, Jerry Seinfeld, D Dana Carvey, Whippy Goldberg playing venues as Caesars and the Comedy Store, the Universal Amphitheater, Amphitheater and opening for such names as Diana Ross, The Grateful Dead, Kenny Rogers, Mike McDonald, and Boz Gags. Whew! Michael rejected offers from Hollywood to focus on using his comic talents for inspiring youth and adults. Drawing from his counseling background, Michael began using his humor to inspire, teach, communication skills, anger management, diversity, conflict resolution, and overcoming burnout and stress. For his work in promoting nonviolence with youth, Dr. Pritchard, Dr. Michael Pritchard was honor, awarded an honorary doctorate in humane letters from Hartwick University and winning a 2001 Lewis Hines Award for Service to Children and Youth Certificate of Appreciation and the 2002 Marin County F Foundation's Burl Buck Fund Award for Achievement in Promoting Nonviolence. As a result of his work, Michael has been featured on CNN, BC's Today Show, The Tonight Show, CBS Morning, Time Magazine, and People Magazine. Michael has too many awards and honors to mention all of them. His seven educational series for PBS and distribution has been seen by millions and focuses on youth guidance in the areas of violence prevention. The power of choice, you can choose, big changes, big choices. Robin Williams in Time Magazine said, if Mother Teresa had had a child with Jesse Ventura, it would be Michael Pritchard. Michael is also featured in the Happy Movie. 
Michael is a wonderful example of wealth in his approach to humanity. He didn't compromise his integrity. Welcome, Michael. Thank you for your Cheryl. second time. This Thank is you. wonderful. It's, it's my been honor. a year and a half, I guess. Yes, but, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, you know, welcome back. You yeah, look great. Thank you. And Thank you. I, I feel and good. I, and I read your your stuff on Facebook almost yeah. every day. Well, try to be positive. You know, I call it optimistic. M Y S T I C. Try to be a person of optimistic uh, tenure because there's a there's a mysticism. Um, Aeschylus said, with every drop of pain on the human heart, wisdom grows. Yes, and if I think, they choose. Yeah, it, well, <clears throat> that's the point. I mean, I think back, uh, Cesar Chavez said, there's two forces in the world, the force that pushes people down or the force that helps rise yes, people up. Choose. Yes. And when I, I try to tell the kids, you know, I just did a TED Talk down in... Uh, Summit Charter School was great, and the kids were wonderful. And where is that? Uh, that's in Redwood City. Oh, okay. And it was kids running it, which is I loved. I loved that the kids had chosen the people to come and speak, and I was one of them. Um, but you know, I was trying to tell them there's a moral compass in each of us that needs to happen. Uh, Dr. King's line was that there'll come a time in your life when you can do the right thing. Or look the other way. Mm -hmm. If you look the other way, you're already dead. Yeah. You'll go on living. You'll go on breathing. You'll exist to the end of your days, never knowing what you were here to do, what you could have become. Making a difference. And what you could have accomplished. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And I think that's it. You know, and I think finding that moral compass is important for our kids. And not... We got to get them up off those screens. Well, it's yeah. Oh my God, I, all of them, all of them. Oh my goodness. But you know, finding a purpose. Right. When you can find your purpose, then you, you're set free because you're like what I'm doing. Right. It's like I finally got it like seven years ago or so. This sure. is you know, and this has evolved. But it's like then th then there's no no stopping you right. know in in educating yourself and becoming more of what your purpose exactly. and your passion is yeah. and then you have a purpose for living right that passion is what's th that is the beating soul fuel yes right. yes yeah, happy happy joy joy well you know i always tell the kids you know i don't laugh because i'm happy i'm happy because i laugh and that's the key sometimes Laughter, just letting go, it's a freedom. You know, the world is hard. It's, it's tough. It's, and it's getting harder. Yeah. I'm I, really it, trying to stay and not say that. No, but, but I understand. I, but I look at the, the kids today, and it, oh my gosh, you know, it, it breaks my heart on some levels. Because sure. the, not that they're not productive, but it's anti-productive too. And what, what is you know, evolving? The, here's what they told me, and this was great research for anybody in the high-tech industry that wants to understand why they do what they do. When I sit and listen, I hear answers. Uh, one of the answers, I said, why do you guys obsess and stare into these screens? And they said, we like to edit who's talking to us. We like to be in control of the cruelty of it. We hmm. don't like, we, we can dismiss people that are inappropriate. We're in control of our emotional wellness on that screen, but not in conversation. And I went, wow. Yeah. That tells you the level of toxic yes. sarcasm. Mm -hmm. There's a, a fascinating study today, and uh, it's on MedFast. S I tell everybody, I tell the kids, a cynic is somebody who knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. Mm, yeah. Today... Uh, research said on MedFast.com that a cynic has a higher potential for dementia. Oh, yeah. Because it's like a toxin to the system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I say a sarcasm comes from that Greek term, the tearing of flesh. And I said, these are toxins to the system. We can't take care of the planet until we internally mm -hmm. take care of ourselves. Then it, then we get blessed. Then we get Absolutely. blessed. Absolutely. Right? And, and it's our responsibility as being happy human beings yeah. to do that. Every one of yeah. us needs to take responsibility. You, you know, I, I thought about this the other day, Show. There's a moment I had, a mother had called me to do an intervention on a dad who was a really self-destructive alcoholic. Mm. And there was a little nine-year-old boy, I went to see him, and he was sitting, he looked like a Norman Rockwell penny, a little cow <laughs> like He could have been 1950, mm. 40, 50, 60, mm. 70, 80, any way through. And when I walked up to him and he goes, please, Mr. Mike, help me with my dad. I love my dad. Please. I went, oh, man. 
oh. nine-year-old kid. So wow. in all my years of doing interventions, 30-some, I've never had one sentence get a person to go to the, the to, to detox or rehab. Not that ever. And we went in, and the dad was rather hammered. And uh, I was waking him up and saying, we got to go. It's time to go, brother. Yeah. It's time to go. You're, you're hurting your family. You're hurting yourself. Mm -hmm. And the little boy goes, Dad, a stranger broke into our house last night, and he, he hurt Mom and I, and you weren't here to defend us because it was you. Oh, wow. Oh, that just gave me a goosebump. He looked oh, over God. at me and goes, let's go. Oh, wow. I never wow. said a word. No, you didn't have to. No, I didn't have to. I didn't say anything on the way out. And I think that when we pay attention and we help a child's heart, right, because children are in need of somebody being there for them, for their family, mm -hmm. and their family wellness. I is illness. Yes. We, we is wellness, well, right? right? You yeah. know, so taking care of that. And then, you know, the more we teach young people to be socially, emotionally intelligent about these things, how to ice, intervene, confront, enlighten, self-destructive behaviors, uh, cutting, um, mm. inappropriate, uh, you know, pornography usage, right. yeah. alcoholism, drug abuse, oh. prescription drug abuse. We here in Marin County are number one in America for pres prescription drug overdose suicides. Oh my goodness. Number one really? in America. Really? In America. Oh wow. Yeah. Uh, one of the drug enforcement agencies gave us that. You know, I just sat with my jaw agape thinking, here we are in the land of incredible privilege. Yeah, and it's, and it's because the value system is off. Yes. And it, the, the group that most is, is uh, highest in that is 59 and above because they don't know their dosages. Oh, my goodness. Mm -mm. So mm -mm. it's important for us to get information out, yes. do outreach to the community, yeah, mental absolutely. health outreach. Everybody wants to blame the guns. And yeah, I know there's it's... a big battle about that. I think it's such... <laughs> you know what? It all starts with love. Right. What, what's inside right. yourself, the right. unconditional love. That's what I talk about on my show is that right. unconditional love. Right. And, and, you know, it, it's unfortunately, or what I should say, it's we all have the opportunity to, to be unconditionally loving right. to ourselves. Yes. And, but we have to re-educate ourselves and practice it on a daily, yes. sometimes a minute minute to minute, minute level. It's a muscle. Yeah, it is. Sure. And you got to keep yeah. using yeah. it. And, sure. and and if we can get that in our kids, see, you know, the parents. Well, you know, And Cheryl, the media and, you know, yeah. the, the government, the, you all know, the them. school, all of Everybody. it is contributes. Faith-based community, education community, community community, corporate community, mm -hmm. business community, um, and recreation activities community. Here's the thing. One of the kids had a powerful line. He said, you know, too many boys in America are, are, are uh, crying with bullets instead of tears on our show. Wow. And, you know, when you see that person who's, you know, in a rage, we, we have a tendency to shrink away from that. We have a sh tendency to shrink away from the bully instead of doing what you're talking about, the unconditionally loving thing, which yes. you try to do intervene in a lighthearted, kind, compassionate way. When you do that, you don't know. It's never the harvest, it's that we lay seeds. Yes, and, right. and I, with my own experience, I, I'm dealing with older adults and, and, sure. and, and their pain that right. they haven't healed. Right. And it's the same thing. I mean, but of course, children have more opportunity to get through it so they can live a happier life. Right. You know, but I'm, I'm witnessing in there. Well, other... you know, the combination that's really rare and helpful is to put those two together, the needy child yes. Yes. and so the privileged. All... I had a guy at hospice. It was a great moment. You know, it was... <laughs> he was passing away. He knew he was mm. passing away, and uh, he had terminal cancer. And we, the young girl taking care of him was somebody I had helped get a nursing degree, and she's caring for him, nurturing him, taking care of him. And he was now looking inside for the answers. He said, you realize that she's the only one that loves me, that she takes care of me, that I voted against every appropriation for her family and her, her, her to have privilege and circumstances. And now she's the one taking care of me. And I opposed everything that their family was about as an immigrant. And the people that come to visit me in a hospital, 
are people that are attorneys who want conservatorship and philanthropy papers, a doctor who gave me a palliative care bill, right. and a couple of cousins who wanted money from me and I hadn't seen them in 17 years. And I, so I said, well, Edward, what have you learned about your said? And then he went, I'm a bleep bleep. <laughs> I started to laugh. I, I go, oh, yeah. And so one of the nurses came in. She goes, I never saw him laugh. And I said, well, oh. this is about self-actualization. Yeah. So what happens we gotta is. we got to laugh at ourselves. Yes, and the situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you can put a young person who's grown exponentially from her own pain and the sorrows and suffering of immigrant status to pushing herself and enduring everything to become a healer. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that can most heal those angry, wounded folks. Mm -hmm. If you remember Dickens wrote Scrooge, he wrote Christmas mm -hmm. Carol, he said, he described Scrooge, he said he was a clutching, grasping, squeezing tyrant, but he was as solitary as an oyster in his own pain. And I see that sometimes in Marin County and sometimes in California where solitary is an oyster in their own pain, wealthy and privileged, and they have everything that one would think this is what the Happy Movie was about. Right, right, right? except that the spirit, the loving spirit inside right. of themselves hasn't come So everybody has it, but it's, it hasn't come out. And that's it what happens. It's being expressed. Then Dickens sends the Christmas past, present, and future to awaken him and teach him that it's Christmas morn. It's a wonderful metaphor, actually. Every day is Christmas morn, right? Yes, you know, if you yes. wake up, every day is Christmas. That's, you know, the same that Frank Capra. I read Frank Capra's, they wondered why he was an inveterate optimist. Capra sat over here at the Presidio in World War I while thousands of people died of influenza and were taken out of the uh, hospital at the Presidio. Mm -hmm. He lived through it. Boy, talk about gratitude. And then wow. he makes It's a Wonderful Life. He yes. makes these powerful yes. films. He made yes. Hemo the Magnificent. He said at the end of his career, if he had it to, and I was so blessed to read this, if he had had it to do all over again, he would have only made movies for children. Mm -hmm. And that's what I chose to do. You yeah. know, most of my films on PBS are about kids, you know, you can choose big changes, big choices, power choice, peace talks, um, life steps. All of these are just listening. Well, well, one, the wonderful thing about that is that adults are all children too. Oh, so yes. that's why it's good for adults to watch. You bet. It, you know, well, taps into that. My father always said, you got to keep that little kid inside of you because that's how you have fun. That's, that's it. <laughs> and that is, no, it, it, you know, Doc, I got to tell you, over the years of looking around, laughing, there's a people ask me why I love people so much and I said because I see the little wounded kid in everybody and if you've worked so long I've been doing this 46 years I started working with wounded in 1968 and these are young men hurt by war and you become extremely reflective and uh, you know I was self-destructive because I'd become so conflicted at, at not the politics of it but the patriotism that led to this belief that this was something that was going to fix things. Ugh, and, and, uh, yeah, look what it's done. Well, the Baha'u'llah of the Baha'i faith said, war is when the losing general and the winning private are buried in a ditch on the side of the road and the line is moved an inch to the left or an inch to the right. Thus is war. And so it, it's sound and fury signifying nothing. And so what we learn is, Peace, unconditional love, healing, laughter, art, music, yes, theater, yes, yes. dance, everything that brings us together as humans and celebrates humanity is what we have to be about. And I was laughing about this the other day, and I, and I know you're, you're right on my wavelength. That frequency that we're on is all we can do is try to offer the outreach because we could stand and argue about gun control. Mm -hmm. What we need to do as a nation is help the mental health issue by each person taking a personal responsibility to reach out to lonely isolates, to dispossessed, to homeless, to insecure, to addic addicted people, 
and just sometimes I think I, I wish more sober people would just go down and listen in on meetings. Yeah. And just sit. And me. you know, I just saw on Facebook the the spikes that are up where the homeless sure. go, and they've do, they're doing that in Canada. Right. And it's like. They, it's not what are they karma. denial? Are they in total denial? No, or, it's, you know, it's, it's just you know. Wow. I loved I, there was there's. This is not meant to be a condemnation. This is an acceptance of how things are taught. When a president would put a hundred thousand people out on the streets that were mentally not well and then for nine years suffer from dementia and Alzheimer's, trapped in a prison of his, uh, his, uh, his own, I would pray for him, you yes, know, yes, that he would come to a gnosis because you can't, you can't escape what you put out. And I always loved him, thought he was a nice man. And I, lo you know, I don't get into the politics of Republican or Democrat. Right, right. I see hearts. And I see, you know, a kid raised, President Reagan was raised by, uh, you know, had alcoholism in his own family. And he became a heroic uh, swimmer in Eureka, Illinois, where my uh, brother-in-law's uh, brother was the mayor. And what you learn is that all of us have struggles. And this is what makes us, that. yes. And, you know, it's, I go back to this metaphor, so that pearl that right. oyster and right. the, the rub of the sand. Sure. And we and if we can all look at it from a metaphor, right. that it makes that pearl. You know, right. we all are the diamond in the rough. We all are that. Right. If we could just know that, and, and you know, it's like I put yeah. put that on to the moon, and right. I'll set it for the stars. Right. But just do that, so it'll pull you in that direction. Right. You know, in, in, in whatever your gift is or whatever your gifts are, whatever, yeah. you know, we all have gifts to give. Yeah, to give. And to, to share. And yeah. then you feel that self-confidence you feel. And then, you you know, I love helping people. Me too. Yeah. And, and that's what life is about because it comes yeah. right back to you no matter what. Yeah, my son who's a doctor, he learned that, you know, as he traveled. Uh, he's been to Nicaragua three times with Doctors Without Borders. And he's been with Naturopathic Doctors International helping. And uh, my friend, Dr. Tabitha Parker, is now down working for the UN and trying to, to help express to people, you know, if we would export as much medicine as we do uh, war stuff yeah, oh my gosh. and export the healers. Yeah. You know, there you go. Right. Then there you go. You know, train, you know, our, build ships, the mercy and the hope, more of those. Only the new type where we can bring hospitals. Um, we can save the world a, a heavy amount of oh my goodness. turmoil and, and, and pain and suffering and mothers losing their children. And so I think that, uh, you know, this all sounds woo-woo and it's like, but, you know, I've been on these streets. I know what violence is very well after years of probation and parole. Mm. And I'm fearless in defending people from uh, the dark sadness and sickness that is out there. But one must be a realist, you know? Right. And I think, but the other thing is, that's really powerful, uh, that's not woo-woo, but it has everything to do with uh, the, the idea of being a person of defending humanity, is that connection to the greater good. Like I tell the little kids, and this is how you know it works out. Um, one of my friends, who's a great, she was Miss Nancy, taught me to teach children that the good you do um, Ruby Peterson, the good you do will come back to you, but the bad you do will be sad for you, but the good you do will come back to you. Yes. And so I've been teaching that to kids for years, and I saw a couple of kids I hadn't seen in years, and they're both farming. They go, hey, Mr. Pritchard, the good you do will come back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm go, they were listening. To share away. Who would no. have ever known they were going to pay attention? Yeah. Oh. And that's, <laughs> that's the five-year-old laying seeds yeah. and not thinking about the harvest because the seeds... They grow, you know, and and being grateful. Yeah, oh that's yeah. to me. Attitude that's of gratitude. Yeah, that's the most important. Besides, of course, having that alignment with your uh, higher God, self, you, universe, whatever you want to call it. That's getting the kids calm. In them. I, I I call it. You like this, Doc? I call it. Got calm. Dot calm, and thankful and tranquil. 
Mm -hmm. So early in the morning, five minutes, just quietly, and it's not religion, it's not no, Hinduism. No, yeah, no, it's no, just, it's just, okay, it's like, no, it's really, okay, here's what it is. <laughs> here's what it is out there, folks who are fearful. And fear, <laughs> fear is the little dark room where negatives are developed. Here's what it is. Getting people calm in the morning and in the afternoon, and, it's, and it helps our children because they find peace. Yes, and, that's, and then when you have that, and you practice that, then right. when all the storms come about, yes. you're, you can still stay peaceful. Yes. You don't go uh -huh. crazy. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Know, you. I mean, it takes practice. Well, you know, the thing I taught kids for years, you know, is when things are crazy, be calm. And when things are calm, be crazy. Yeah, <laughs> Creatively fun. crazy. Yeah, yeah, well, that's what it's about. That's exactly right. I like to get on the elevators. Uh, and just have lots of fun and just start asking <laughs> questions. Elevators. You know, hi, do I know all of you? Why are you here with me? And what, what brought us to this? Did you know that coincidences are God's way of remaining anonymous? And you have fun. <laughs> I mean, they're always yeah, laughing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody yeah. meets. There's, there's a, uh, in the Happy Movie, there's a guy who wrote the book Flow. I, I have to share with you, I get in flow all day long. I do. I get on a frequency, I'm laughing, people laugh and enjoying it. And I don't let people uh, disturb my day. You know, I always love that line by the kindergartner. Don't let their bad day be your bad day or your bad day be their bad day. Don't play angry tag with people. I love it, angry yeah, tag. Angry yeah, yeah, well, yeah. we yeah. do that. It's a virus. Hmm. Yeah. Let me do my Richard Nixon for you. You ready for Richard Nixon? <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know what the last thing Richard Nixon said before he left the office? I did this on a, it's on YouTube for me introducing the Bread and Roses show. He goes, there are people out there and they will hate you and they will only win if they get you to hate them back. Then you begin to destroy yourself. Gee, Dick, where were you that memo in kindergarten? What comes around goes around. <laughs> Richard Milhouse Nixon. Richard Milhouse <laughs> The capture of the large beast. Um, there's, there's a, uh, in the Happy Movie, there's a guy who wrote the book Flow. I, I have to share with you, I get in flow all day long. I do. I get on a frequency, I'm laughing, people laugh and enjoying it. And I don't let people uh, disturb my day. You know, I always love that line by the kindergartner. Don't let their bad day be your bad day or your bad day be their bad day. Don't play angry tag with people. I love it, angry yeah, tag. Angry yeah, tag. Yeah, well, yeah. we yeah. do that. It's a virus. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <sighs> wow. If we could all live like that. Well, the thing is to do is the attitude of gratitude yeah, absolutely. And, and surrender, forgiveness, yeah, let it go. Absolutely. When I'm teaching anger management, I always tell them, I said, you know, it, it, you know what? It can get your goat unless you tell them where it's tied. <laughs> and sometimes if you don't let go, you'll get dragged. Oh, well, that's... I said, you've all been water skiing, right? <laughs> you're, you're swallowing water. You go, let go. <laughs> you go. Oh, wow. That was easier. And then the other line is anger past 30 seconds is ego. Yeah. And it'll oh, kill absolutely. you. It'll rust your yeah. pipes. Yeah. I see it. I see the rage out there. And you know when I was up in Idaho, one of the little kids had a great line. He goes, you got to teach those people not to be hater taters and let their kids to be hater tots. <laughs> hater tots. He goes, we got too many agitators. Oh, that's great. I like that, so agitators. Agi yeah, kids have great words. They, yes. they teach great words. That, that's very creative right there, and I love it. Right. You know, uh, one of my friends, uh, Captain, his grandkid, Captain Carnes, so many of his grandkids said, he goes, well... He goes, I like her to be on my team because I go to Catholic school. And you've heard of a, a, an athlete being really athletic. Well, she's a Catholic. <laughs> she's really super Catholic. This is a little, <laughs> this is a little, I was like a Catholic. I go, well, yeah, well, I'm a Catholic. Pretty Catholic. The most Catholic guy you'll ever meet. I'm on the rosary all the time. Oh. I say, say the, say the rosary, give the devil a headache, right? So... <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you have to laugh. I yeah, mean, if you, can, you do. Right. So tell tell us about what you're doing with the bullying thing. You know, I know you right. work hard with. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, y y y you see these shootings. The one in Oregon yesterday. The one uh, with the young man uh, down who's the self isolate. Um, Two young men whose fathers were Hollywood directors, uh, Atias and Rogers, both, in a very brief period of time, took many, many lives in the same area. And there's a disconnect when we overprivilege a child. Yeah. You know? Oh, absolutely. And nobody's to blame. I, I don't want to blame. Yeah, it's yeah. not my job to yeah. blame anybody or right. accuse I, anybody. I yeah. You know, especially parents who are suffering with the loss of their own child mm. and his mm. indiscriminate uh, murder of other people. So that said, I always love this line by uh, one of the kids who's dyslexic. Blame is just me with blah, blah, blah in front. So let's all take a look at our own actions. You know, that's why I tell the kids personal accountability for how we treat each other. And when we're talking about the bullies, we get the kids up. I had a great moment from a young girl, about 12. And I said, well, I wish we, she was very tough and determined. And she got up and she said, I don't want my parents called dykes. Oh. I don't want, them. this is in front of the school. Right, right. She goes, they're great people. They're healers. They help people. Yeah. And oh, by the way, as long as I'm up here, why should they have to ask for permission from a religion or from politicians to be themselves? Who mm. made that rule up? Mm. And I went, yeah. <laughs> Another little girl whose mother was uh, a domestic violence response person who had been hurt got up in New Hampshire and she said, I refuse to bow down to bullies and I refuse to be a slave to the fear that bullies bring. The fourth grader. Yeah. And I looked over and one of the teachers, old, older, <laughs> old hippie, Guy, teacher, you've been at the game as long as I. And he goes, "Whoa, <laughs> whoa!" I go, "Yeah." Whoa. <laughs> and so, when she was walking away, I go, "Hey, Tavon, Tavon, before you go, I go, remind me again. What's the motto of the great state of New Hampshire?" And she goes, "Live free or die." So, yeah. bullying is in an epidemic. There's books, the sociopath next door. This is going to sound inappropriate. I'm just going to say it. It's the name of the book. It's called Assholes, a Theory, and it is by Dr. Aaron James, who's a professor at UCAL Irvine, a mm -hmm. philosophy professor. Another book called The Science of Evil and Cruelty by Simon Baron Cohen. These books can help us understand. There's a great website called psychopathfree.com on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It can help people free themselves from the indignancy of abusive relationships and yes. behaviors. And young women who are easily bullied or manipulated early in middle school can go on to accept domestic violence. Mm. Young men who become bullies. Mm. This goes back all the way to uh, a big biography I read on Mussolini. He was a bully. He stabbed oh, a child yeah. at 12. <laughs> He was 12. He was oh. 12, and he stabbed another 12-year-old. Oh. And they kind of let it go. Mm. People were afraid of him. Because of the name, too. If you don't intervene, right? Right. Oh, yeah. You know? Well, that's why I, I have my show. Because, right. I, because it's so important to, to actually recreate the moral fiber of what's, right. what's going on. I mean, and I guess I have more impetus or more drive because my, I, my one of my ancestors was one of the forefathers of the Constitution and right. he started the first Bible Society right. in America mm -hmm. so I guess it's my turn to to you know to make an influence what's because, in your DNA yeah you and can feel it resonate. yes oh my god mm -hmm. sure you know so it's so important to change the integrity and the moral fiber of right. this country and, and right. what we do is going to affect many other outside you, you know i was on a reservation <sighs> and and i and i hear what you're saying one of the ladies i said we've got to find ourselves and afterwards the one of the holy people on the tribe walks up and goes mike we love you and what you said but you do not ever find yourself you create yourself 
please say that from here on out. And I went, create yourself. Create yourself. Yes. And yes. I was like, wow. Yeah. You know, yeah I learned every day truth, I listen. I know. Yeah. yeah. When she you was listen. Great. She was yelled at me. We were in the car and I said, oh, I can't believe this lady did that. And she goes, you listen to me, Michael. Don't you judge her. She is doing the best she can with who she was and what she was yeah. giving. Everybody in life. is. Everybody and is. And I went, yeah. I go, why don't, why don't I just shut up? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just shut up. Just stop judging. I know. Yeah, and we, know. we all have we, a tendency yes, to do and, and I, part of it. I, and, the, and the consciousness is to catch yourself. Right. Yeah. And, and as quickly as possible. Yes. And, and try to, you know, not, you know, I, I find myself like with all. But I, I think that what saved me is my kids. I have a <laughs> son who's a sitcom creator and his son is a doctor and my daughter I love my daughter she's a therapist <laughs> you know what a therapist yes, is <laughs> she listens to people's yep, life right. situations that's right. right but she listens mostly yes. yeah. yeah and what I love about Katie Rose is that she's a musician and a masseuse and a chef and she's learned so much and she's now become the family teacher you know you you learn I think all of us have learned from her and her wisdom and I think that if we're wise we realize that sometimes our kids have wisdom, as you were talking about, in our DNA that resonates out. And we should pay attention to that. Sometimes little kids, I remember I was over, I thought this was the sweetest, funniest moment. This little kid had the funniest description. Uh, we were in Oakland at Civic Court Elementary, and this little girl left the kindergarten, and she, and she slammed the door. She goes, I'm not talking to anybody. Boom. And I go, wow, I go, that little girl was angry. Mm -hmm. And this little boy was on the carpet. He goes, that little girl has always been an emotional porcupine. <laughs> I go, I want, to write the, I go I want to write that book, The Emotional, emotional porcupine. porcupine. We all know people yes. who are emotional porcupines. Yes. And they're just hurting inside. Yes, right, exactly. That's what it's all they about. They fire every quill because mm -hmm. they're wounded. Yeah, and right. some some people internalize it, and right. some people externalize it, like this yeah. little porcupine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I mean, their That's descriptions good. of things are, you know, uh, I, I love how they can come to a wisdom. You know, like what I said to one of them, what did you learn today? He goes, don't let your sad turn to mad, because then it all gets bad. Mm -hmm. And I go, wow. Yeah. The Petri dish of all the rage in our country is unaddressed grief. Oh, totally. And unaddressed totally. grief turns to anger, the anger to rage, the rage to violence. Violence has two directions, out towards others or inwards towards mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And teaching that, you know, um, the line by Yoda is, fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. And wow. Look at the world suffering right now yeah, from the big hate. Big time. Big, it's, big, big time. You know, yeah. I and, mean, I, I've been talking about the chemtrails that are happening. Yes. And I am just, I'm enraged about it because why? Why? I mean, I've been, I did a, a show on it, yeah. actually. And I understand what's going on and how, and, and I'm understanding a little bit more why. But it's like we're contaminating, you know, we're, we're, we're causing Alzheimer's and autism exponentially, and it's like, w wake up. What what happens is, and it's it's. Um, I, I always describe Marin as the most conscious and unconscious place on the planet <laughs> simultaneously. You know, it's amazing. The dichotomy. Place. <clears throat> yeah, and and it's powerful. But you you realize that. Um, that fear is what you know is is what permeates it. Uh, George R. R. Martin just wrote, "Laughter is poison to fear." Yes. So laughter it diffuses it's it. Freedom. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, Hitler could not stand Charlie Chaplin doing the Great Dictator, right? Because he was <laughs> mocking Hitler and Mussolini. Yeah, Jack yeah. Oakey yeah. and 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 uh, Chaplin were hysterical as Mussolini and and uh, Hitler, and uh, satire. He got in trouble for that. Oh yeah, Ooh, absolutely. Big time. Sure, yeah. Ooh, satire. You know. Well, look, look. We listen to John Oliver. We listen to John Stewart. We listen to Chris Hayes. We listen to Rachel Maddow. We listen to Bill Riley. We listen to mm -hmm. pundits speaking, right. and. Uh, 
you know, what's important for people to get is it's not necessarily the entertainers that we need to be listening to, but ourselves and how we treat others. Yes. And, and it's so simple. Yeah. M m satire and mockery ha no doubt have their place in, in, in great politics. But what's more urgently needed and important is self-compassion yes. that extends out to helping others. That's that unconditional you know, love. Right. Yes. And saying, you know, we're all suffering. We're all in struggle. Yes. Who might I help today? Absolutely. Who might I encourage, uplift, uh, be kind to, assist, nurture? Yeah. I love the line in the happy movie when the German guy who was a banker who quit his job to work at the hospice said, I realized that my life was a loan from God that I must pay back with interest. <laughs> and that's what we all need to get. Yes. We're yes. given this gift. And like I tell the folks who are wealthy, and uh, I hope they understand it, the Egyptians thought they were taking it all with them, but we can go to the <laughs> Rosicution Museum. It's there. They're still <laughs> gone. It's still here. They didn't get to take it with them. And so um, it's so powerful uh, for people to get uh, that that gift is just time with somebody. A little kid up at St. Vincent's Orphanage, it was the best. A little, little guy, lonely, daddy Aww. hunger, just needing. Yeah. He goes, can I speak to you privately? I was like, oh, well, sure. He goes, but totally, nobody else. And I go, sure. And I go walk around the corner, I go, what did you want? He goes, I just wanted to be with you. Aww. Aww. Well, that's what we all want. Yeah. In hospice, this is what I notice. Everybody becomes a little kid again. Right? They want to be read to, they want to be nurtured, they want to be loved, they want affection, they want to be hugged. They'll tell you they don't want to be hugged, but like, right. you know, they, everybody they want to be hugged, yeah. right? And they want to be treated with nurture. It's a funny thing to be zero to five and need that, oh, and wow. then in the hospice need it just as much, if not more, as we're transitioning That's out. the reversal. That's right, and you, yeah. you just tell them it's transition when I spoke at... Yeah. Uh, my young friend Dino Ratto left us early at 36, and I mm -hmm. talked to all of his nieces and nephews. I said, a caterpillar curls itself up into a ball and believes it's, as its bristles stiffen and its respiration slow and its cocoon is formed mm -hmm. that it is going to be passing away. And it has no idea that it will be transforming into a beautiful butterfly with other butterflies going over a fragrant yes, meadow. Metamorphosis. And when I looked over, one of the little guys was like crying really Aww. hard. And I couldn't look at him. I was like, whoa, i got to get out of here. I can't go on any farther. And I was Aww. like, because he was... Go but afterwards, he said, I understood what you meant. And I said, yeah, because we believe in heaven. We believe in angels. We believe. In miracles. In, in things, yeah. And we never quit one minute before the miracle happens, right? Yes. Right. Yes. Because devil's in the details. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. So is there any more that you would like to share about the happy movie? Because I'm so happy that it's yes. it's going on PBS uh, yeah, and they're using that. Yeah, I really that. want people... Thanks, Cheryl. I appreciate that. I want people to understand that there's portions of that. You know, one of my big things is this young generation who are overworking in high tech. They're mesmerized and hypnotized by the screens. They are consumed with the technology that's moving us forward. But as Toffler said, if we have high tech, we must have high touch. In other words, we have to be connected to each other and community and love and compassion. And uh, you may be a big success. You may have great grades. You may have achieved. You may be an entrepreneur. But if you're not connected to the fact that the platform of freedom from which you operate on was purchased at the price of the treasure of sacrifice of humans, fighting and standing up against evil and tyrants and despots and and sick people that would take lives on a large mass level. And that purchase, that sacrifice, that treasure is a gift to you to operate now globally. Pay attention and and, and feel it. With the high tech kids, and I, they're great kids, they're brilliant, and I, I really honor them. 
But when you see the happy movie and you see all the Japanese people who suffer from kuroshi, exhausting oneself for systems that cannot appreciate yeah. your sweat equity nor your spirit. And I know that the, the heart uh, heart attack is you know ratios got yes. tremendously in Japan. They gave a day. They had a day down the other day. They took a stand down day in Japan the other day, a holiday because stressors are reaching oh, good. exponential. Well, Just, finally the folks at the tippy top are going. We're killing yeah. our people and therefore our culture. Yeah. Yeah. And so we Look have it to takes. get, and that's what that's what's happening in this country. And, this and, is and what I the don't kids want it. Say. I want it to stop before it's too late. Right. This is what the kids are saying when they see the movie. When we show the movie in a large group, they go, um, "Mr. Preacher, I worked eighty hours last week at my high tech job, and I didn't have to, but I did because I want to be helping. But I don't know if I'm helping, and they mm. don't appreciate me, and they don't value me, mm. and I'm working so many hours, I'm just exhausted. I have no strength to go." Hello, <laughs> Karoshi, Karoshi, and so they all. There was a there was a, a resonant. Uh, it was an awareness. Yeah. You could feel yeah, it yeah, 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 yeah. go oh. through, and so young people Amen. have to get <laughs> have a life, have some joy, have some fun. You know, you don't stop playing because you grow old. You grow mm. old because you stop playing. Yes. Spend time with your kids, your family, your moms, your, your dads, your cousins, your sisters, your friends. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and 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 the thing that gets us through all the hardship is the best ship to sail on, friendship. friendship. <laughs> right? Isn't that great? Little kids love that. They go, it's so true. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. Uh, I remember doing a bunch of gorilla things in front of the kids. I was going, <laughs> and this little boy goes. Oh my God! I love this guy. <laughs> it was like the best. I said that's the best review I ever had. So, you know the joy, like being with the kids who have cancer, and boy, when you make them laugh, you know, yeah, and you watch things yeah, that happen. Yeah. That the transformation. Uh, yeah, I only saw my son Connor. He got really emotional one time when I was with the cancer kids, making them laugh. And when we walked out, he goes, "I go, you okay?" And he goes, "Yeah." He goes, uh, "Sometimes." You know, is that little boy's terminal, Dad? I go, mm, yeah, that happens. He goes, well, sometimes I just forget who you are. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because he takes it so yes, serious. Yeah, because, because he feels like it's his responsibility yes, to save him. Yes. I mean, that's what right. the doctors, yes. yeah, yeah. Right. And Release and like, oh, oh gosh. <laughs> well, the, th the thing is, in the moments, every time I've been with uh, suffering wounded people, um, being present in the moment to teaching them joy or laughter, it, it, it's, it's a great pain relief. It is a great uh, spirit release, and it is a, a phenomenal emotional attachment. You know, that nurture you feel from somebody who can make you laugh oh, yeah. and feel and accept things, you know. And I remember sitting with uh, one of the dads whose son was very sick, and I said, you know, it's going to be okay. Stay or go, it's going to be okay. And he goes, and you know that because? I go, I know that because I look into you and I see that you have been a phenomenal father. Aww. And he broke down crying. Aww. And he goes, do you don't know how much I needed to hear that? And I said, well, Aww. yeah, I do. Because I'd like to hear that if that happened to yeah. my kid, right? Yeah. Life. I know my daughter said to me, she's 23, she'll be 24, because I was a single mom for the, sure. from the very beginning. And she Struggle. Goes, Oof, from three months pregnant. And she goes, Mom, Ooh. you were the best mom and dad that I could ever do. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, it, that's such, I, there's a book by J.R. Moringer. And you'd love this book. J.R. Moringer wrote the, the Tender Bar. And his mother helped him get into Yale. And his mother gave him 500 bucks to get the uh, ring from Yale as he graduated. And he took her out on Mother's Day. And he said, the ring is for you because I've been searching for a father all these years. And I found out that my mother was way more a better father than <laughs> any father I could have found. Oh, well, see, I had an absolute wonderful father. Yeah. So, it, so he came through me. Right. That's so. Well, that's that's yeah. how that works. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, 
I hear my dad. I mean, when I do the routines in front of the kids, I hear my World War II dad, you know, <laughs> as long as you live under my roof, Woo. you'll do as I say, or you can get up. You want something to cry about? I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> my, fa my favorite one, though, is he would laugh at me so hard when I was a little boy. He goes, did I or did I not tell you to cut the grass when I left this morning? I go, oh, yeah, Dad, I forgot. Yeah, what about me? What if I forgot about my job? What if I forgot what I was supposed to do? Maybe you could cut the grass. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, just, you got away with yeah, it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He loved me because I would make him laugh. Yeah. He'd go, what planet are you from? And I'd go, mm -hmm. out in the Pleiades, Pops. <laughs> so, you know, and I, folks, I am actually from Exopolitan. Come from another planet. I'm here. We'll be okay. Okay. Mr. Flaherty, dude, I love you. You totally rocked it. Okay. <laughs> Am I bad? No, you're great. You're great. You know, because you're such a good, wonderful healer. And that's oh, why you. I wanted to have you back on. Oh, you, my and pleasure. And thank to be you, here. thank you, thank you. My I, honor to be here I, with you. God bless you and your work and all the people that you work with in, in the spiritual realm that you help. Um, great psychic waves of good, loving energy and unconditional love your way into all the people in your congregation and all the people that are blessed by your presence mm. and your holiness. Holiness means above, separate from, and, and connected to as well. And right back to you. Thanks, kid. Thank you. You bet. Ah! Water! <laughs> I'll leave you with this. Never give up wherever you are and doing in your life. Work with integrity and have a positive attitude. First and foremost, with your family and friends. First, be aware and conscious of your thoughts and catch yourself before they come out of your mouth. And be grateful for your freedom and eat healthy. Good nutrition feeds the mind and your body temple. Don't forget to exercise, feed your spirituality with meditation and prayer. Thank God with unconditional love. Love yourself unconditionally. Stop criticizing, stop judging, judging and allowing others to dominate the way you feel and think about yourself. Be compassionate and share your abundance and wealth with others. When fear knocks, let faith answer the door. Thank you, Marin TV, for facilitating our show and especially to my crew, Eric, Brad, and Jack. Please support and become a member of Marin TV. Bye for now. Until next time. Oh, that's very interesting, Doctor. And, and, and your associates? Who are you associated with in, in, in this field? Ah, sì, 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 sì. Um, <laughs> Prissimo Caramalino Manaforte. Sì, è vero, ma quello Matoro è molto fratelli, muy madre è scambucha. That's very interesting. I, 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 I kind of, I, I, I don't know. Sì, 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 can you can, can I get a close up on this one, please? Right it's here. It's a beautiful, pure cedar, sanded, down to a lush patina. Amazing. This is just amazing. I'm sorry. There is another person here. Um, ah, yes. Um, oh, okay. You never saw me. Right. Did you, you saw her too? Right. Our new sponsor, provided by Dry Erase Marker. Dry erase marker. Always there when you need a non-wet solution to erasures. That's in my it's, state. <laughs> yeah, it's a very trick question. It was a trick question, but there was a man. Oh, it. you mean in Vermont or something? Uh, there you go. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. Was it like 07 or something crazy? Yeah, I think it was around 07 or 08. <laughs> when, see, I don't even know. See? <laughs>
So uh, we're wrapping it up now. Thank you, uh, Mr. Schwarzenegger, for uh, being on our show. And uh, just a few more things. Are you working on any new videos or new projects yes. in the future yes. that we could see you maybe? I am building up my muscles again because while I was governor, I ate too many Californian cornbread fields. I just devoured them all with honey and butter. So now <laughs> I'm going to bulk up again and make muscles famous like I did before. Yes. Wow. Can't even. This is very intimidating, I have to say. Well, uh, thanks again, everyone. This is your right, just to remind you. And uh, thanks to Mr. Governor Schwarzenegger for joining us. And I hope you guys enjoyed our uh, short broadcast of our game show where we bring us action news and we give you broad daylight and we give you update questions on what we're going to be doing in the show. Um, President 26. <laughs>